Captain Latimer wants me to prove that I can stay alive with just my spacesuit for protection. We have Sergeant Johnson and Sergeant Jacobs in there with you today, and so two of our finest, and you got a good chance to meet those guys uh, whenever they were uh, over in the integration room with you. They're going to be right there. If There's an to. awful lot of people, presumably all to keep me alive, because when all the air's pumped out, this chamber will turn deadly, making some strange things happen. Is that going to boil? That will begin to boil at around 63,000 feet, so we're going to, and I'll keep, uh, keep you posted on that as we get a little bit closer to it. Okay, we're going to start our uh, rapid ascent up to 75,000 feet now. Roger. And we're going to keep an eye on that, uh, that glove, which has already expanded considerably since we started. Now, we just passed through 50,000 feet. That's what the Air Force deems as the space equivalent zone. And uh, that's kind of a carryover to the back to the old space race days, whenever uh, we were trying to kind of set a timeline between us and this. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Let's just be clear. That water isn't boiling because it's hot, it's boiling because the pressure's so low. Without this suit on, my tears and saliva would boil too. And our glove just popped, so it made it to 70,000 feet. <laughs> so far, so good. But things would get a lot more hairy if my cockpit canopy were to fail. Without my suit, such a catastrophic pressure drop would rip apart my lungs. Let's practice that then. Three, two, one. There you go. Pull that helmet hold down. Perfect. You did a great job. Looking good. How are you feeling? I'm still breathing. You are still breathing. Your suit pressure looks excellent. Your helmet pressure is looking good. So everything worked exactly like it's supposed to, which is always great. Good. I'm very glad that's over with. Well done. Your brains didn't blow up, your eyes didn't bulge out, your guts didn't fall out. So it's a good day so far. What do you say we get you out of that kit then? Yeah, let's get out of that. Let's go. There is one more thing to sort out before my training's over. I'm reporting to Captain Latimer again to discuss a rather delicate matter. What we're going to talk about now is the, uh, the urine collection device. And so uh, if uh, you needed to urinate at altitude, uh, this was available to you. And so um, we'll kind of start off by separating this piece off. This is a once used component, is it? It's not, actually. Um, it's uh, the, once it's uh, the, the pilots, uh, this is um, able to be washed. Generally, when the pilots are done showering, they'll take it in the shower with them and uh, rinse it out and clean it out and um, ready to go again. And how do you, I don't want to get too graphic about this, but I have to try and get this around my chap. Correct. Like, God, oh, blimey. Won't it just make it fall off like docking a lamb's tail? It's very well, tight. It is, and that's why we say uh, we trim it, uh, well, you'll trim it to fit, um, and uh, we can uh, provide a technician back there with you as well too to assist in the in that if you in the, in the actual trimming to show you how to how to work it if you need to but the, the main thing is we'll make sure that it actually does fit properly if it's overly tight it obviously constricts blood flow to that area you do have to trim this piece uh, to, to fit and best to to maybe go a little conservative with the trim at first and then try it on and then you can kind of back it down so no boasting to. sort of right yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay that's so, terrific